Hi, I'm Jennifer Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to turn your iPhone storyboard into an iPad version of the same storyboard. It's a good idea to have that as a template when you start developing an iPad app that's based on an iPhone version. Imagine you had an iPhone app, like this single view application here. And then a little while later you think, do you know what, this is a great iPhone app, now I want to make an iPad app out of it. Or just add a universal interface. So by default you have one storyboard, and perhaps you have a label, and you can identify this maybe by saying iPhone storyboard. So far so good. The app's released, it's on the App Store, you're making great success with it. Now it's time for the iPad version. First thing you need to do is head over here. This is not a demonstration of how to create a universal app. This is just a quick demo of how to turn your iPhone storyboard into an iPad version as a starting point. And in here, if you select Universal Devices, then Xcode will offer to copy your current storyboard and create an iPad version out of it. You don't really want to do that because this option doesn't really work. And the file that Xcode says it's going to create is, I don't know, somewhere hidden and uneditable. So don't rely on this. Say don't copy. And now you have an iPhone and an iPad version that you can select here. But you only have one storyboard file. So how do we copy this thing? You can't do it from within Xcode. You'd imagine there's a duplicate command here somewhere, but that doesn't exist. You have to right-click this file and say Show and Find Out. That'll open this. And this is a folder of your project. And if you look here in the root folder of your project, there's the storyboard is nowhere to be seen either. It is hiding under base proj. There it is, main storyboard. And we can leave it there and we can just use the finder function and hold down the Alt Option key, then click on the file and drag it down and that'll create a copy of it. You can alternatively just, because this is finder and it'll work, you can just right click on this and say duplicate. That will also work. I'm only going to need one version here and I'm going to name this iPad. Or you can call it main iPad, whatever floats your boat. This only creates that resource, an exact copy of that resource in Finder. Xcode, however, if we go back, doesn't really know about this yet. So we need to import that file into Xcode, and that's going to be good because it's then under version control as well. Right click anywhere here, or select File from the main menu, and select Add Files to Storyboard. Well, Storyboard is just the title of my project, so don't want to confuse you there. If it's kind enough, it navigates to your current folder already. Head over to Base Proj, and then select your newly copied Storyboard. It's the one that's not grayed out. If you do that, Xcode will add it to your main bundle. Currently, they both look the same, and that's perfect. Head back over and make sure that our iPad version actually selects our iPad storyboard. Nice. Now comes the difficult part of Interface Builder. If you go and select your iPad storyboard, you'll see that this actually looks like an iPhone. Uh, really what we want is this to be the iPad storyboard. So the idea is that you start with this and especially if it's a complex storyboard you don't have to recreate all your connections. You can literally just start with this as a starting point. It's not going to look great but it gives you an opportunity to then go and slide the labels into the right places and so forth. Adjust the backgrounds and whatnot. But as I said, right now this looks like an iPhone and really what we want is for this to look like an iPad and we know Interface Builder can do it. It is fairly easy to convince Interface Builder to display this as iPad and here's how we do that. On the bottom right here you've got this little flick switch which will apply the Retina 3.5 inch form factor. So by default, I suppose as of Xcode 5.1 you'll see a 4 inch version of the iPhone here and if you click that it'll become the 3 inch version. And you can keep clicking that, and it'll just keep you know, going up and down. So make sure this is 3.5 inch, because that's what the iPad currently is. So make sure it's that. Then we head over back to our file inspector, and right-click on the iPad storyboard. And in it, we can see under Open As, we have two options here. 
interface builder, iOS Storyboard, that's what we're looking at right now, and we have the option to look at it as source code. Under the hood, really, uh, Storyboard is just XML code, and we select that, and here is the XML code. This gives us the opportunity to do some manual tweaking here, and this is exactly what we're going to do. Up in the, not in the first line, but in the second line, the one that starts with document type, the very long line, if you can't find it, you can always go Command F and search in this thing. We're not going to do that because I can see it already here. Target runtime. That's how Interface Builder identifies how to display this storyboard. So iOS.CocoTouch is the iPhone, and iOS.CocoTouch.iPad would be the iPad form factor. That's all you need to do. Just add .iPad under the target runtime. No need to save, no need to restart Xcode. All you need to do is right-click on the iPad storyboard again, open as Interface Builder Storyboard. And if you do that, voila! It is so big it doesn't fit on my screen. It is, in fact, now an iPad storyboard, or it displays as an iPad storyboard. And you can take your label and put it anywhere you like. Rearrange your interface. If you've tried this before and you say, hey, do you know, I did this and sadly all I got was another iPhone interface, then, then there is something you may have overlooked. If I go back and display this as source code and I get rid of .iPad again, I display this again as a storyboard, it's important that you click this button first. If you have forgotten that and you leave it as a 4-inch iPhone version and you rush over here and say source code and you then apply .ipad up here and then you go back open this again as interface builder then you are absolutely right it still looks like a four inch iphone with the removed benefit that there's no more button that <laughs> lets you switch between um, the three and a half inch and the four inch version and that is of course also taken care of by a little key value thing here uh, in case you have forgotten, it's no problem. You head over to source code and you can either do it the way I did it, just get rid of this, go back into storyboard and flick that button, or you go into the very bottom of your storyboard. This can be quite a long list on uh, extensive storyboards. And uh, the very last line before the closing simulated metrics container is simulated screen metrics, key, destination, type, retina 4. And that is what effectively, if you leave that in, that removes that button on the bottom. So just get rid of that as an alternative, head back to Interface Builder iOS Storyboard, and we have our iPad Storyboard back. And notice, no button here to switch that back, and that's exactly what happened a minute ago. Okay. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, please share this video with friends, family, and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now. I'll see you next time.